Hi, my name is Akaron, and welcome to another one of my outrageously amazing, insanely enlightening master keys of creation about how to create and attract the joy, well-being, and abundance, and freedom that you desire, and how to be the unlimited master of creation that you truly are to literally make all your dreams come true, and you'll find tons more awesome, empowering videos, articles, books, products, support, and guidance at uh, on my website at zakyron.com, on my podcast site at Master Keys of Creation. And, of course, on my YouTube channel to help you easily create and attract the happiness, health, wealth, abundance, and freedom that you desire. All right, so here we go. The 10 Master Keys of Relationship, Enlightenment, Empowerment, and Fulfillment. Dedicated to everyone out there struggling with that dun-dun-dun-dun nemesis that we call relationship. Because contrary to what people erroneously believe... Love and relationship do not have to be a struggle and heartbreak is not inevitable or even necessary and you literally contract the lover of your dreams but you must be a vibrational match to that lover to attract them. And contrary to what humans wrongfully believe, no one has the power to negatively affect you in any way. No lover or boss or parent or child or sibling or pa or, or partner, etc. can actually negatively affect your mood and make you sad or angry, etc. Unless you react in a negative way because you believe that you need other people to act in certain ways so that you can be happy or vice versa. So that you, you believe that other people need to act in certain ways to keep you happy. And the absolute key to your freedom, empowerment, and fulfillment is to cut out the middleman and just be happy, regardless of what anyone else is doing. And to love yourself and other people regardless if they are loving you or not. So, I hope you enjoy uh, this uh, vodcast, 10 Master Keys of Relationship, Enlightenment, Empowerment, and fulfillment <clears throat> all right so here we go now we're going to get to the meat and potatoes here the 10 master keys of relationship enlightenment empowerment and fulfillment now your natural way of being is joy and ease your natural feeling state is happiness and excitement and your natural state of being is to be an unconditional lover and your purpose in life is joy, and the basis of life is freedom. And you have the complete power and freedom to create anything that you desire, including having absolutely amazing, fun, and loving, and joyful, and exciting relationships. Relationship does not have to be difficult and full of conflict compromise and heartache it can be full of joy and ease and always be a win-win where everyone is happy as long as you understand that it is not your job to please anyone else but you and it is no one else's job to please you no one outside of you has the power to negatively affect you in any way it is only your negative reaction to them that makes you unhappy because you neg your negative thoughts pinch you off from your own source and your own natural good feeling state of joy and love. There is no such thing as assertion. There is only attraction. And nothing and no one can assert their will upon you against your will. Absolutely every action from others in your life in relationship to you is 100% attracted. Not necessarily consciously or deliberately, but vibrationally, absolutely, based on how you have been thinking and therefore vibrating. Assertion only feels real and it only seems like there are you know, bad guys in the world that are more powerful than you who somehow have the villainous ability to assert their nefarious will upon you without your consent because you can't imagine how you and others could or would attract bad people and bad things. 
And so people have imagined evil forces and devils and vengeful gods asserting their will upon us. But every bit of that is pure, 100% fantasy. There is no such thing as a dark force or a devil or a vengeful god, and there is no such thing as victims or evil perpetrators asserting their will upon the meek and mild. There is only attraction and absolutely every single nanosecond of every single person's lives on planet Earth, every good experience and every bad one, they attracted these experiences to themselves 100%. They just didn't do it consciously or deliberately, they, but they did it vibrationally. Because everything in creation is vibrational in nature. And every thought you think creates a vibration which attracts other things that match that vibration. You alone are in control of your happiness. Humans have created an extremely faulty belief that their happiness is dependent upon how other people feel about them and how they treat them, and if they approve of them, and admire them or not, love them, of course, but your happiness has nothing to do with anyone else in the entire universe, and it doesn't even have anything to do with God either, because how other people treat you, and feel about you, and react to you has nothing to do with you, other than the fact that you're, you're attracting them, and their behavior based on your vibration. But no one else can think for you and vibrate for you and feel for you. So regardless of what anyone else does or doesn't do, they cannot create for you, which means they cannot create your joy or your sadness or your anger or your disappointment, etc., etc., for you. Only you can based on how you're deciding to react. You are 100% in control of your own mood based on your reactions to what other people are doing in a positive or negative way. It's up to you. Or not reacting, and then this is your choice, to not react and stay centered in your own natural state of joy, regardless of what other people doing are doing. So what other people feel about you is none of your business and something that you have zero control over and does not have to control your mood unless you react to it and you value other people's opinions to subsequently give you self-worth or a lack of self-worth, depending on how they feel about you. So... When you have conflict with other people and misunderstandings or when someone blames you for something or accuses you of wrongdoing, whether it's valid or not, and someone lashes out at you in some verbal or physical way, well, that anger doesn't really have anything to do with you personally because you, don't have, do, you do not have the power to assert your alleged evil will upon someone else and make them a victim or make them feel bad or feel disappointed, etc., etc. Only their reaction to you and their own beliefs and fears and thoughts have created their current aggressive reactive mood, not you and what you've done. You are merely an actor playing a part in their play, in their attraction, if you will. And in, and in this case, your part is one of villain. Even if your inten intention was to be the lover rather than the villain, nevertheless, in their eyes, you are the villain. But ultimately, their aggression or reactions and choices of how they are going to feel have absolutely nothing to do with you because everyone creates their own realities and their anger and aggression is their own battle with themselves, not you. They're just using you as an excuse to blame for their own misalignment with their natural state of joy that they have created with their limited, fearful, lack-oriented, judgmental, poor-me, victim-oriented thoughts. And when you understand that, and don't take other people's stuff per personally, 
you will discover the key to liberation and freedom in regards to relationship. And eventually, if you stop reacting negatively, as if you are a victim and, and stop defending yourself and stop playing the poor me victim game and take responsibility for the creation of your own reality and stop taking responsibility for the trying to take responsibility for the creation of other people's realities, which is not possible, you will achieve an absolute pinnacle of self-empowerment. And those kinds of people who do not take responsibility for the creation of their own realities, well, they'll just drift away. And you will attract loving, generous, self-empowered people into your life that are an absolute joy to be with, rather than people who blame you for the problems in their life. And the key to that att attraction is the key to all attraction. And that is to focus on what you want rather than what you don't want. But if you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the drama queens in your life and defend yourself and try to change their minds and try to get them to understand you and like you and approve of you and love you, etc., well, they'll stick to you like glue and become your nemesis. Bum, 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 bum. But you are not responsible for their behavior. People who uh, are who they are based on their own desires and their own thoughts and their own beliefs. And you're just an attraction based on those things, those beliefs, those thoughts that they have. And regardless of what you do, good or bad, they alone are responsible for their own reactions, thoughts, and feelings, and attractions. And that includes you. Yes, you attracted them and their behavior because of your past thoughts and beliefs. But you did not cause their behavior as if you have some sort of control over them and, and can assert your will upon them, no matter how heinous your actions supposedly were. That's as far as your responsibility goes. Just your vibration attracting them and their behavior into your life. And the next key is to value that conflictual interaction rather than hate them and hate yourself and blame them and blame yourself for creating it. And instead, allow this undesirable interaction and that relationship to do what it is naturally doing, which is to inspire you to desire improvement in your relationships. Yeah, that relationship might suck, your conflict might suck, but it has inspired you great desires for new and wonderful relationships. And then the next key to mastery is to then focus your attention upon those improved, delicious desires and those improved relationships that you've now launched big rockets of desire for and stop thinking about the crappy relationships that inspired your desire for deliciously joyful loving ones. So then your attention and actions should be to think better feeling thoughts and enjoy the delight of imagining those delicious, luscious, joyful improved, fun, exciting relationships. As humans, we crave approval from others and work hard to maintain that approval. But ultimately, that is futile and impossible because other people's approval of us has nothing to do with us. It, is only, it only has to do with their reaction to what we are doing and their own choices of how they are going to feel about what we are doing. And when we do receive their approval, it only feels good because we react to that approval in a positive way. So similarly to how we began, because there is no such thing as assertion, there is only attraction, not only does no one outside of you have the power to affect you in a negative way, no one has the power to affect you in a positive way either. No one can assert negative will upon you or positive will. It is only your positive reaction to them that makes you happy because your happy, positive-oriented thoughts are in alignment with your source and your natural good-feeling state 
of joy, love, well-being, and abundance. So, simply put, no one can assert anything good or bad upon you. It's all about how you react to that positively or negatively or neutrally. And when you can get to a place where you have released all of your concerns about how other people feel about you and you have released all of your desires to control how other people feel about you or to your desires to control anything for that matter so that you can feel better <clears throat> and you just instead feel great regardless of what anybody else is doing and you just focus on the only creative control that you actually have which is how you feel about them and how you feel about yourself and you create nothing but good feeling thoughts about them, you will achieve a level of utter and complete empowerment and freedom and fulfillment because you have achieved your natural state of unconditional love that you always were, but you just forgot how to be and how to do because everybody trained you how to be con a conditional lover and a conditional liver rather than an unconditional lover and an unconditional lover because you have zero control over how other people think and feel. Only how you think and feel. So I'll say that again. You have zero control over how other people feel, but you have 100% control over how you think and feel. That's the only control you have in the entire universe. So in regards to love, you believe you want that delicious, loving person, that gorgeous lover so that you can be loved. But that's not actually accurate. That's not correct. You want the delicious, joyful person to love, not be loved. Because you don't have any control over being loved. You only have control over loving. Because again, you have no control over the love of others and whether they love you or not. You only have control over your own love and your own positive focus upon others or not. And when you can release your concerns about whether or not other people love you or understand you or approve you, approve of you or support you or admire you or honor you or respect you, etc. And you just focus on your love, your own love and how you, the quality of your love for others and love for yourself and and you focus on understanding and approval and admiration and appreciation and honor and respect of others, and you master the art of finding good feeling things to appreciate about everyone and everything, and you master the art of good feeling thoughts in general, and you pay little or no attention upon things and people that are difficult to love, honor, and appreciate, you will have achieved what we commonly call enlightenment. And the angels get their wings because you are focused on feeling. Which is more unconditional in nature. Enlightenment really is unconditional love. Plain and simple. And unconditional love is, fo is being focused on feeling, not on conditions. And, un and unconditional love is... It's closer to the natural state of who and what you truly are as source, which is purely positive, 100% unconditionally loving, not reliant upon any conditions to achieve that love. Or simply put, you do not look towards external conditions to determine how you're going to feel and whether you're going to love or not. Especially since external conditions have already been created. And they're done. They're a done deal. They're, they're in the past, really. And you cannot change external conditions. You cannot change the past. You can only create a, a new future. You can only create new wonderful things with the thoughts and the desires of it. You can't get rid of the past. You can't change the past. You can only create what you want, not get rid of what you don't want. So I repeat, you have no control of love or approval or respect or honor, or appreciation, etc., coming your way from other people, but you have 100% control over your own love, approval, respect, honor, and appreciation of others. Which kind of blows the doors off of this thing that a thousand th songs and a thousand movies have been 
about, which is unrequited love. Because no one has any control over their love being requited or not. No matter how many hoops you jump through, no matter how many plates you spin, no matter how many balls you juggle. And anyone who has ever been on planet Earth understands that fact because you can, you know, you can stand on your head and juggle chainsaws and spin a hundred plates and and spin a hundred hula hoops around you while you uh, stand on your head and do all the supposedly perfect things and have all the best intentions and the most pure of heart in the world and still get rejected and still be misunderstood and still be abandoned and cheated on, etc., etc. So the absolute golden pathway to liberation, freedom, and fulfillment in regards to love and relationship is to be unconcerned if others love you in return and only be focused on your own love for them. And to really enjoy the gorgeous, delicious excitement and joy of that love as you hold that person in a place of 100% appreciation and honor and respect and unconditional love. And you just focus on the wonderful things about that person and you pay no attention whatsoever to their negative aspects so you just focus on them with 100 percent appreciation and unconditional love whereby it does not matter what they do or think or feel about you or anything or anyone you regardless you love them unconditionally so if you like someone potentially more then they like you or the relationship just hasn't progressed to a place that you would like it to be. Well, don't worry about it. Just enjoy the delicious desire of loving that person and doing the fun things with those person, that person. Just enjoy the delicious desires of playing with that person and having dinner with that person and walking on the beach with that person and getting intimate with that person and Making love with that person and traveling with that person, etc., etc., without a need for them to reciprocate those desires and feelings. And either they will come around and you will be doing those things together one day, those dreams will be fulfilled, or someone else will come along that matches those desires and you'll be playing with them instead. And it will be even better than you imagined. And the process you use to attract that person is the same process you must use to create anything you desire. you got to enjoy the delicious desire of it before it will manifest physically. Which means you got to become a vibrational match to what you want so that you attract it physically. you got to enjoy the joyful feelings of your desires first then they will manifest physically. And when you are able to enjoy the joyful feelings of those desires, now you are a vibrational match to those, to the physical manifestation of those things because those are the feelings you're going to feel once they manifest. It's the only reason, because the only reason you want anything is for the joy of it. And if you get happy first by enjoying the feelings of your desires, the joyful, delicious feelings of your desires and being, doing, and having what you want now, feeling it now as if it is here now, your desires must manifest because they vibrationally match your joyful state. But most people have it backwards. They want the stuff and the lovers and the money and the success and the fame, etc. in order to be happy. But that's backwards. you got to get happy first. Then the money and the honey that you know will make you happy must manifest. Because they match your happy feeling state. They're the same vibration as your feeling state now. And when you can master the art of delicious, joyful desire without a desperate need to have the physical manifestation of your desire so that you can have a happy reaction 
that external condition, well, then you will reach a state of joyful bliss, empowerment, and fulfillment, and satisfaction. And add as an added bonus to getting back to your natural state of empowerment and satisfaction, your joyful desires manifest. boom Mic drop. And then you get to revel in your unlimited power, your amazing, infinite power as an immortal creator of worlds. And the key to manifesting amazing relationships and to manifesting anything that you desire for that matter is you must become a vibrational match to the qualities that you seek because based on the law of attraction, everything that comes to you always matches your vibration. So if you want a caring, generous, self-empowered, fun lover, well, then you must match that vibration and be a caring, generous, self-empowered, fun lover yourself. Even though the lover's not here yet. You can't manifest that delicious lover if you are not one yourself and you're not a vibrational match to it. And you can't attract a gorgeous lover if you keep thinking about an absence of lover. Because an absence of lover is not a vibrational match to the fullness of the abundance of a lover. And you can't manifest the lover of your dreams if you keep bitching, moaning, and complaining about your shit lover or your crappy former lovers or the erroneous belief that there aren't any good men or aren't any good women out there in the world. And similarly, if you want more money or better health, etc., you can't manifest riches and wellness or whatever you want, if you're not a vibrational match to riches and wellness. Because you keep bitching and moaning about your empty bank account and bills, 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 and the tax man and the scumbag rich people and and the corporate this and the government that and rabble, 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 and you keep focusing on illness and and unfairness and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Those are not vibrational matches to an abundance of wealth and an abundance of health. And the final key. The final key to creating kick-ass relationships and manifesting your desires into your physical reality and experiencing a life of joy, well-being, abundance, and fulfillment is to understand and fully realize that you are doing extremely well. You are amazing. You are an awesome creator. Regardless of what anybody else has told you, you are awesome. You are amazing. You are magnificent. And give yourself a break already. There's no judge out there aside from stupid, ignorant humans that don't know better. There's no divine judge judging you on how well you're doing down here. And whether you're good and whether you're bad, etc., etc. There is no naughty list. There's only a, everybody's amazing list. And you are top on that list. And no one else's judgments or lack of approval or lack of love, respect, honor, understanding, etc. about you have anything to do with you. And in turn, do not need to affect you in any any negative ways unless you decide to believe that what other people think about you is important to you and you react accordingly positively or negatively and the other key to your liberation freedom and, and empowerment is to understand and embrace the fact that you have the complete power to create your own mood of joy regardless of what anyone else is doing on planet Earth. I don't care what horrendous things people are going through, bombs falling on their head, doesn't matter. You have the ability to be joyful, regardless of what anybody else is doing. And that's the most powerful influence that you can have upon humanity and the best way that you can help other people. It's by being happy, not jumping into the pit of despair with them, but by being happy and inviting them up the emotional scale to your joy. 
And with that foundation of joy, you can create absolutely everything and anything that you desire in your life. And the entire universe is 100% unconditionally supporting you to achieve it. And all of the money and the well-being and the love and the amazing relationships and everything else that you desire are all on their way to you. And all you have to do is allow them to come to you without resisting them with your doubtful, limited, judgmental, fearful, poor me, victim, negative, oriented thinking. And finally... Just feel appreciation for what is and what you have created without judgment because whatever currently exists is done and dusted. You powerfully created it. It's a done deal. There's nothing you can do to change any of it because it is not possible to control external reality. Only your internal reality which then attracts, or changes, if you will, external reality. And what exists that you don't like, that you already created in your life, that you already attracted in your life, is now inspiring your desires for what you do like and do want. And that inspiration is helping you create it. So, don't dis what exists. Don't try to fight against what exists. Don't try to kill off what already exists. Just create what you want. Don't focus on what you don't want. So contrary to what humans believe, you don't need to get rid of what exists that you don't like. So all that will somehow miraculously be left will be what you do like. Which does not work. Because whatever you focus on, the unconditional law of attraction will unconditionally give you more of that. Whether you want it or not, whether you like it or not, whatever you focus on, good or bad, the gracious and unconditional law of attraction will give you more of it. So, it is not possible to get rid of unwanted things by trying to kill or reject or judge or incarcerate what you don't want. Because... You'll just attract more things that you need to kill, reject, judge, and incarcerate. Again, what exists already, already exists. And no one has any power to assert control over your external reality or anyone's external reality. It only appears that way because action appears powerful. But action only works because we agree that it does. External control of reality relies entirely upon agreement, which is why people join political parties and religions and gangs, etc. But external agreeing upon control of reality through physical action has zero leverage. Zero leverage in comparison to the unlimited power of thought. And therefore, the unlimited power of the universe of creation. So simply, it is not possible to destroy what you don't want. It is only possible to create what you do want by focusing in that positive direction. Because when you focus on what you don't like and don't want, you just shoot yourself in your own foot because you will just attract more things that you've got to futilely try to get rid of. And you just attract more battles and more battles and more battles. So you got to learn how to appreciate what exists, good or bad, because the bad shit inspires great clarity and focus upon what you do want. In other words, bad shit creates good shit. When you got bad shit happening, you launch good shit rockets. And the final, 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 final key, I know I already said that about 10 times, the final, final, final key is to then focus all of your attention upon those delicious, joyful desires, and especially focus on the joyful, delicious feelings of being, doing, and having those desires in your life right now without the need to physically have them here yet. And think not about the unwanted things that inspired those desires. 
But, ju- you know, as an added caveat, don't judge yourself when you occasionally dip down in vibration and become bitchy Bitcherton for a brief amount of time. Focusing, you know, you travel down the proverbial dark path for a few minutes, focusing on what you don't want. Don't give yourself a hard time about that. Just get back into alignment. Instead, you know, just catch yourself and laugh about it. Go, <laughs> oh yeah, I went down the old proverbial dark side again. Oops, went down the poor me, powerless, helpless, unworthy, not good enough victim pathway for a few steps. Ha <laughs> ha, no worries. Just get back into alignment with your, I'll, well, I'll just get back into alignment with my natural, joyful, abundant, happy, loving state of being by focusing on anything that is easy to like, love, and appreciate. Easy peasy and get back on the yellow brick road heading towards your desires and with your good friends, Toto, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion. And just forget about that wicked witch that inspired your adventure to creating your delicious, wonderful, fun desires that you are now creating with your thoughts and with your vibration. Yay. Or, to state it all very simply, you need to master the art of appreciating what exists And at the same time, be eager and excited about the fun stuff that is coming to you. Yeehaw! So I hope you enjoyed my podcast, 10 Master Keys of Relationship Enlightenment, Power, and Fulfillment. I know you did because it was freaking awesome. And I hope that it has empowered you to create the life and relationships of your dreams. Because remember... All your relationships can be easy and fun and exciting just as long as you just adopt that little path of mastery, that little master key of creation where you no longer make other people responsibility for your own happiness and you only take responsibility for your own happiness and you don't take any responsibility for anybody else's happiness. And you just focus 100% on feeling good, feeling good, feeling good. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this outrageously amazing, insanely enlightening master keys of creation. If you got something from it, please comment, share with your friends, bless them with these amazing teachings. Remember to subscribe subscribe to my YouTube channel so you get notifications of my latest videos. Uh, Please visit my podcast, The Master Keys of Creation, available on Buzzsprout and all podcast sites. Come visit me at Chiron.com for tons of more self-empowering videos, books, products, coaching, and support to help you powerfully and easily create and attract the happiness, health, wealth, abundance, and freedom that you desire. My name is Chiron, and I help success and joy and fun-minded people create the happy, abundant lifestyle you love. Thanks again for watching my video or listening to this podcast, and I wish you immense joy and abundance on your magnificent journey of divine creation. And of course, remember to make life a holiday. Woohoo!